Abbott, and I'm here today to do the uh, take a first look at the new Canon 35mm, this is the f1.4 L USM Mark II lens. And uh, this has been a widely lauded, hotly anticipated replacement to the beloved original 35 millimeter f1.4 l lens that uh, has been in a number of portrait and event photographers lens kits for a long long time and and so we'll be taking a look at how the replacement um, holds up to that reputation and builds upon it for comparison purposes i requested and got in the kind of the current standard that a lot of people have gone to and that is sigma's 35 millimeter f1.4 um, this is a DG, it's from their art series, and um, is a beautiful, um, exact same aperture, um, wide aperture prime lens. And so a very good comparison, it's optically excellent. And so we'll take a look at how those two compare. And then thirdly, I have in my own personal kit, Canon's 35mm f2 IS USM lens. And, and so we'll be comparing all of these together. And so as you can see, we have kind of a small, medium, and large, and it used to be that this was the big 35 millimeter, and as you can see, the new um, one from Canon is larger yet. So to give you an idea of how these break down, price-wise at current prices as of today from B&H, um, it's 549 for the 35 millimeter IS lens, F2 IS, and uh, then the Sigma um, Art Series 35mm f1.4 is $899, and then the new Canon um, comes in at a fairly hefty $1,799, and so it is basically dead on double the price of the Sigma. To give you a few of the raw specs here in terms of their overall build, as you can see, the uh, Canon is the longest of the three, and it comes in at 105.5 millimeters. And so it is quite a long, slender lens, um, and um, it also is the heaviest by a good margin at 760 grams. And so it is a hefty lens and you feel that weight. And one thing I've quickly noted is that it feels, just holding the bare lens, feels a little bit front heavy. There's a lot going on towards the front of that lens, but it is a, it's a dense, heavy lens. The Sigma is 94 millimeters compared to the 105.5, and it weighs 665 grams. And so in and of itself, of course, it is also a heavy, um, dense filling lens, but it is um, about 100 grams lighter than what the 35L Mark II is. Then bringing up the rear at 62.6 millimeters long is the, um, the Canon F2 IS and it is only 335 grams. And so it is, it's less than half the weight of the new Canon and, and just a little bit over half the weight of the Sigma. Both the Sigma and the uh, Canon uh, F2 IS have a 67 millimeter front filter thread. And uh, then the, the Canon Mark II, retains the L lens, retains the 72 millimeter uh, front filter thread of its predecessor. And uh, that is a, is a plus if you have um, older um, Canon Prime lenses, a number of those that, kick, that had the 72 millimeter as kind of a standard. However, outside of those lenses and amongst a lot of the modern lenses that I've been reviewing, almost none of the rest of them have a 72 millimeter front filter thread. And so if you don't happen to have those filters, already or have some older L series primes, then you probably aren't going to have that and probably it won't be shared with other lenses. Both the Canon and the Sigma um, have nine bladed apertures. The F2 IS lens has eight blades. Um, the uh, Canon is the most complex, unsurprisingly, 14 elements in 11 groups. The Sigma, not much less, 13 elements in 11 groups. And then finally, the F2 IS is 10 elements in 8 groups. The, um, the, well, let's just start over here. The closest focusing lens is the, the F2 IS, and it will focus down to 24 centimeters and produce a 0.24 times magnification the best of the bunch here. The Canon is next. It will uh, focus down to 28 centimeters and has a 0.21 times magnification. 
Finally, the Sigma will focus down to 30 centimeters and has a point to zero times magnification. All of these, of course, are useful. The most useful is the Canon here, and of course, more useful still, and I don't have it in front of me, but I reviewed it a, a couple of months ago, and that is the new Tamron 35 millimeter F1.8 VC lens, which actually has a 0 0.40 times magnification, or twice that of the Sigma. And so here's a look at the actual overall lenses themselves. Now, obviously this Canon, it has a price tag that is more than the other two put together. What it does bring, of course, other than being an L series prime, but it definitely builds upon its predecessor in that it adds a few new tricks. It's got a brand new um, type of element in it that is uh, considered to be exceptional in re reducing um, like chromatic aberrations. And so we'll talk more about that when we do the actual review. Also, it has a weather sealing, which neither the other two have. And from what I've already looked at in terms of the engineering, it is very nicely weather sealed. And I also read a very interesting article by uh, Roger Sicala from Lens Rentals. And he has the chance because he has so many copies of lenses and has to repair them. He tears them apart and, and looking in the internals of this, although it's a heavy lens, in his opinion, it's not wasted, but rather this is the most highly engineered, um, durably built prime lens that he has ever seen from any manufacturer. So that's pretty high praise. And I'll throw a link to that article down below because it's worth a read um, and interesting to look him tear this down and to show how robustly built it actually is. And so it is at a whole nother level in terms of build quality compared to these other two. And over the next uh, few weeks, month or so, I'll be examining and comparing the image quality and we'll see how that breaks down. And so stay tuned. And uh, we've looked at the build quality here, but we will go on to look at various aspects of image quality and a variety of ways and also very important autofocus. And uh, we'll take a look at all of that. And so I'm Dustin Abbott. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you.